Curtis Blades, biggest betting favorite on this fight card top to bottom tonight. Was training at a UFC gym, as many of you know, when he made his UFC debut against Francis Ngannou in Croatia back in 2016. Says he may not have left Chicago had he won that fight. Now doing great work, of course, under Cody Donovan and the crew there in Colorado. No surprise to see Blades shoot early and succeed. And right here is where he has his most success. He just stays over the top of you just like this. And he's going to wait for Shamil to work his way back up to his feet. And then he's going to put him right back down again. <laughs> Keep punching him until he gets tired and then finish him. That's what, that's what he's always looking for. And Shamil needs to get away, keep the space, move his feet. Which, of course, is a whole lot easier said than done. But Abdurahimov with a good sign there as he gets back to his feet. Well, when you saw the speed of that shot, yeah, it's hard. He shot very fast. And there he is, back down again. Too easy. So Blades adding to that record total of takedowns in this UFC heavyweight division. Two for two thus far, about a minute gone by. And Blades is UFC tested, man. He's been in a lot of tough UFC environments, fighting Mark Hunt in Australia. Had a win over Alistair Overeem back in June of 2018. He has become one of his primary training partners now. Nice shot by Abdurahimov, the fight hands. And you can see sort of the anxiousness in Abdurahimov's corner because they know that as he tries to close the distance, he runs the risk of getting planted on his rear end again. He's got very good footwork and movement. You saw the timing of that uppercut right yep. there. He's got the advantage on the feet, but in my opinion, he does. But Blades, man, the way that he shoots like that, they're just fast shots, and he's very powerful when he gets inside. Third takedown for Curtis Blades. He's just going to cover his hips right there. So Shamil has to really get on the hands, get his hips to the fence. But what's making it tough is Blade's always controlling the hands. He's always controlling the wrist. So the second you try to get your base underneath you, he, he puts you on your face. And then once you get your hands underneath you, he hooks your legs. So it's just back and forth, high, low with the grappling, how he does it. Now he's got a hook in, and now you got to carry his weight all the way up again while he's got the crossbody ride. It's exhausting. And it's hot. <laughs> that too. And some of the little nuances to control wrists and hands that is lost on a lot of people, he has mastered. Hand control is key. And this is basically D1 college wrestling right here, just in a nutshell, except you can cheat and punch at the same time. <laughs> so he's having a lot of fun right now with your blades. This is his style fight right here. This is where he doesn't feel threatened at all. And of course, he trains at altitude. His cardio is outstanding. And despite the fact that Blades doesn't cut weight, right, that he is well below that 266 pound limit, he's very strong, deceptively so, I think. And I think it makes him quicker, too, the fact that he does it, that he's lighter at this, at this heavyweight. Shamil Abdurahimov, also another guy who comes in below that heavyweight limit. Oh, with authority. Back down again. And Shamil's slowly saying, come on, man. Get off my wrist, please. He's looking for a Kimura here. He keeps going to that, but it's not really going to get him up. He needs to worry about the hands, getting on the hands and getting his back up against the fence if you're Shamil. A couple of nice right hands from Curtis Blades. And it'd be really interesting if he developed into a submission threat. No wins by submission in his career. Actually hasn't even attempted one in the UFC yet. But if he can add that layer to his game. I Ooh. agree. You're, you're exactly right. That's just the next dynamic of growth for Blades, I believe. And, but he says, I have the game of attrition. My game is right. to just wear you down until you quit. And my wrestling coach always said to me, it takes, a, it takes a man to hold another man on his back. And right here, we're seeing 
him just get beat down on his back. Big ground strikes here. Oh, big elbow there. Oh. Final seconds of the round. And see, he waited for this. Wow. Hard to hear that horn, but Mark Goddard heard it. Round one is done. I'm not even sure Abdurahimov knows if it's a stoppage or if the fight is continuing. Four big takedowns, and you see him change levels and stuff right through the takedown defense of Shamil like nothing. Just cuts right through it. Straight to the hip bump, back down to the floor. There's three right here, number three. Gets back up, and here's number four. Four takedowns in first round. It's a high pace right there. And what, what you see is then he goes to, to better the position and really start the ground and pound once he gets the early fight out of Shamil. Very smart tactic. Look at the light feet. Shamil early. And he knows he's got to land early. And that's what he's looking for. Nice he's uppercut. Yeah. And now he's got his knees together and he's on his butt. Dump. <laughs> five for five, Curtis Blades now on his takedown attempts. And I'd imagine some frustration sets in. I mean, you try to mentally get above it, but nothing easy about this matchup. Yeah, it's hard to say whether you want to punch to defend or if you want to back up and be ready for the shot to defend. I think the best key for Shamil is you got to move forward on Blades. If you let Blades move forward on you, it hasn't been working so far. Blades has worked, excuse me, really hard to round up and shore up his ground and pound attack. Certainly put it on Alistair Overeem about a year ago, but to really be more efficient and accurate when he loads up on the ground strikes. He looks super heavy on top, as you're seeing here. I mean, just makes you carry all his weight, just hangs on you and keeps kneeing and elbowing. And he's bettering his position each round. He keeps getting a little bit deeper into the position more. Be, meaning mount, he's always looking for mount now. In the beginning he wasn't. He was okay with just letting Shamil work his way up to his feet. Now he's got half guard, and you'll start to see him land big shots from the ground and pound now as Shamil gets some of the fight out of him. Three and a half minutes here to go in the round. There's a two on one hand control right there, and just basic wrestling right here. Hook the back leg. Big shots are landing now, and Shamil's just like, man, get off of me. Get out of that hands trapped, so he can't defend it. He wants to stand up, but he can't because he needs his hands, and that's the problem. Shamil's not getting to the problem. The problem is the hand control, and Blades is just better at it right now than, than Shamil. Already nearly six minutes of top position time for Curtis Blades, who mixed in a nice elbow there. And that's the end of the fight. Mark Goddard had seen enough. Curtis Blades, your winner by TKO. Oh, Shamil Abdurahimov just got busted wide open. And that's what Mark Goddard saw that maybe we didn't. Big elbow landed and just split him wide open. I mean, that is a lot of blood and a lot of power that he ate to the face. Not fun. Gosh, that was hard. And that was the perfect elbow. I mean, he opened his hand and it was the tip of his elbow that just landed right on the bridge in the nose here. Look how he hits it with the tip. Ooh, and it slides by the nose. That is the worst elbow you can eat right there, ladies and gentlemen. And you see him grab his nose immediately because it's pretty much shattered. And once Mark Goddard saw that Abdurahimov had grabbed his nose, when you're grabbing your nose, you're not intelligently defending yourself. And of course, nasty, the nasty elbow. After, yeah. Jeez. I mean, that's just painful. If you've ever had your nose broken, you can't see. You immediately pretty much go blind for a second, and then your whole face feels like it gets lit on fire. <laughs> to make this one official, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Goddard has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 22 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by TKO, Curtis Razor! Play!